Okay. So welcome to uh, the Long Island Women in Tech Lunch and Learn series. Uh, Jean Hannon, your host, and we have Stefana, the founder of the group, joining us, as well as many, many familiar faces and some new ones, too. So this is wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for spending lunch with us. Uh, I'm happy to introduce today Stephanie Ryan. She's a manager of business development at B-Lab, and that is an organization dedicated to uh, really, it's a not-for-profit organization, and they're creating a global movement for business as a force of good. And they accomplish this through something called the B Corp certification. And today we're going to learn what B Lab and the B Corp certification is, why it's very important, how the process works. And this is just information that I think for us it's interesting to know, but it's also something you might take back to appropriate people at your organization and just say, where, where your company is on this continuum and what next steps you might be able to take from that. Uh, personally, like sustainability and just being a good corporate citizen is, is very near and dear to my heart. So I'm really looking forward to learning a lot today. Uh, Stephanie, thank you for joining us. Without further delay, the floor is yours. Okay. Hey, Jean, uh, welcome all. I hope you're actually having your lunch. Um, and I'm going to rely on Jean just sort of tag me if you want to pause at any time. I will say that uh, PowerPoints are not my favorite, but I know it conveys good information visually for folks. So I'm going to whip through them a bit because there's uh, quite a lot here. And then you'll have a chance to have the PDF of this later if you want um, and dive in in more details. So as Jean was saying, the B Lab is the nonprofit that I work for. Uh, and uh, we've been around for um, well over a decade, and I've been part of B-Lab for um, almost from the beginning. Uh, so uh, the intention for us is really around changing the infrastructure uh, of what supports business in helping to address some of the most pressing social and environmental problems. We know that government is critical to that equation, and we know that nonprofits are, but if we don't bring business and its ability to scale, with um, both with uh, investment capital as well as talent, we feel like we won't reach what for our vision is a society that enjoys a more shared and durable prosperity. Oops. Let's see if we get the right, oh, I see what's happening. Sorry. So it is a global movement. This gives you a sense of the um, partnerships we have around the world and uh, the mentioning of the number of B Corps. Of the nearly 3,000 B Corps, half of those are outside of North America. Uh, it's been a quite a groundswell of support coming from leading business leaders like um, Rose Macario from Patagonia or um, Investment Capital um, with Larry Fink of BlackRock. Um, academics um, are really seeing, and B-Lab itself has won awards from Skoll, from Aspen Institute as being the nonprofit that's really driving the ability to have entrepreneurs address the most pressing social and environmental problems. So you probably had a chance to read those. I'm not fond of reading quotes out loud, so you're going to be on your own when it comes to the quotes. So a little and bit I appreciate, Stephanie, that you're going to um, share this deck after. Yeah. Yeah, so the, um, the evolution of the market, to have some more context of like why this matters and what's going on, um, the stats in terms of consumers are really interested in paying more for sustainable brands um, that can be seen as organic, really wanting to understand at point of purchase who it is that they're buying from. Increasingly, we've seen a shift in identity in terms of um, our workplace and wanting our workplace to be a place of purpose and wanting to work for companies that align with our values. And then the growth of the asset management class um, of impact investment um, to greater than 12 trillion now. But depending on where you look in the stats, that number is even higher. So how does B-Lab fit into this? This is really our theory of change. Um, our intention was how do we build a credible community of businesses and prove that triple bottom line practices, people, planet, and profits are a viable way of leading a company and that you can do well and do good at the same time. So really taking it out of the ivory tower of um, academia and evidencing. And so by building a community of now nearly 3000 credible B Corps, and the way that we've done that is to create a set of standards and a um, legal framework that they both meet. So those are sort of the market infrastructure to uphold and sort of shine a light on those companies. 
those tools are also become something, the B impact assessment, which are the standards behind certification for many other businesses to follow. They don't necessarily have to pursue certification, but they need to look at what does it mean to take better care of all stakeholders, our employee, the environment, the community, um, and then continuing to inspire others, whether that is where you work or where you buy from or where you invest to be supporting these businesses um, in terms of being able to be good stewards of the environment, recognizing that creating good quality jobs makes a difference, um, and then being good citizens within your community, and that all of these are critical components for establishing that shared and durable prosperity. So if to, ah, let's see, every time I move my cursor, there we go. So to get a better sense of the traction of the movement, um, talked about infrastructure, I'm gonna say a little bit more about um, benefit corporations is the legal framework that we passed in 37 states. It's been passed in the um, province of British Columbia, as well as in Italy and Puerto Rico. Um, our standards, the performance standards that companies hold themselves to are now in version six. They're free, confidential, and comprehensive for your whole organization. This is something that you could just go on to our website and take to get a sense of um, how could you manage your business more holistically across um, tending to all of these stakeholder groups. So that's really a call to action I'll reiterate at the end. Some companies pursue B Corp certification, um, nearly 3,000 now, and we've also been tracking um, in terms of companies who are either B Corps or have also adopted the benefit corp legislation just solely, um, have raised over $2 billion in capital. So it's a way of proving that investors are embracing this as well. Our partnership currently is with the UN Global Compact to help companies measure their progress against the sustainable development goals. And that's going to launch in January of this year. And so this kind of captures uh, a kind of a century shift um, around the narrative around business. And what we've seen is an uptick in certifications in the last 20 years that try to understand who are the good players, who, are, who has that third party verification. Uh, but typically those certifications are product or process specific. And so B Corp certification builds off of those. It's not that those are wrong. It's that it's looking at your whole company as an understanding. So a little bit more about the definition of what's a certified B Corp. Um, the analogy, if any of you guys have, have uh, kids, I think the, this is like one of the few times I use that, that uh, skill from your SAT. This is to that as that is to this. So <laughs> Um, think about fair trade or lead. Um, B Corp certification is looking at the whole company's performance. A recap on some of the stats I've shared. Um, we're in 150 industries, over 65 countries. And here are some of the logos of the companies who are in the space. Um, Alt School, um, an alternative school based in San Francisco. CHFA is um, a collaborative around healthcare um, based in New York City. Uh, Severus Poder um, is uh, around looking at literacy and um, education. Obviously, names you recognize like Eileen Fisher, Ben and Jerry's, Patagonia. Um, uh, Green Mountain Power is a utility in Vermont. Um, Bombos Socks. Um, Roshan over here in the corner is uh, Afghan Afghanistan telecom communications business. Uh, Kickstarter tech platform for fundraising. Yeah. So, so Stephanie, a lot of uh, a lot of the folks here, women in tech, work at tech companies. So Kickstarter starts to sound like that could be applicable. Are there other companies that might be um, cloud, cloud-based, or artificial intelligence, data-driven type of companies that have uh, gone for this certification? Yeah. So, um, great question. Uh, the the industry spread does tend to bias, I think, a little bit more towards CPG companies, um, fewer perhaps in, in manufacturing and tech. Um, but it doesn't, uh, uh, a lot of financial industries, um, whether banks and all. And so I went and I looked, um, I thought some of the ones that I'll rattle off are ones you may be more interested in. And you can always search on our website in the directory by keywords or industry and purview all the profiles of those companies. Um, but Tech Ranch, which is an um, tech incubator in Texas, so bringing sort of the pipeline of those businesses forward. Um, tech Networks of Boston, they're also one of our best for the world winners and they're developing skills in their community for IT workers. 
Um, one of my favorites is Roar for Good. It's a wearable technology that helps reduce assaults for women. Um, so they can put um, a way to like literally signal if they're in danger. Uh, Traction on Demand is based in Canada. They're a, um, a Salesforce sort of customizer, IT consulting firm, and then folks like Hootsuite, if you're familiar with their social media management company in software. Um, and some of these are also sort of global. Uh, Quorum is a SAS, um, SAS platform uh, out of France. Wonderful. And uh, I'm just looking at a question in the chat that uh, Kimberly asked. She's asking how well, well app, well dash AP, how does that relate to B Corp? And Kimberly, I'm not familiar with, with that. Do you want to, or Stephanie, do you understand that question? I'm not familiar with it either. Kimberly, say a little bit more about who that is. So Kimberly, I don't know if you're able to come off mute and talk a little bit more about your question. Well, Kimberly might be in an office and unable to. So um, if you type anything else, Kimberly, we'll, we'll try to get that answer. I'm, uh, I was quickly trying to Google it, but I haven't pulled it up yet. I'm going to guess it's, um, no, it's not come up. I was guessing maybe it's a certification program. Um, and so built into the assessment, if it is, um, that in that level, um, a lot of times one of the questions we ask companies if they have achieved other certifications and we give companies essentially credit for that aspect or area of the business where they've held themselves accountable to a third party mark. So Okay. Uh, so a lot of times people are also curious about who, it, those are a lot of private companies are in the B Corp community and that's how it's built over time. But we have a number of um, businesses who are wholly owned subsidiaries like um, Ben and Jerry's of Unilever or Sundial, um, Happy Family is owned by Danone or, or um, Plum, owned by Campbell's. Uh, so a number of these companies uh, started out um, Happy Family, Plum, and New Chapter as certified B Corp. Um, actually, no, New Chapter didn't, but Plum did and then became um, a subsidiary of Campbell's and Happy Family and then became a subsidiary of Danone. Um, Unilever has snatched up probably a half a dozen as part of growing their um, uh, portfolio of businesses who are a force for good. And then we call that really a mission aligned exit. The whole point is for companies to be able to um, grow and scale and not dilute on those practices um, as they get larger over time. So why would companies become B Corps? Here's a quick summary of the kinds of things that they're looking for. Um, it really, that third party validation is about brand integrity and value, differentiating yourselves from your competitors, a way to amplify voice, gain press, um, attract and retain, as well as engage talent. Um, companies use the B Impact Assessment to improve over time because uh, it's a comprehensive measurement of the company's practices. And oftentimes that's a great measure and a way to engage employees in the process and look at how can we build culture more effectively. And then um, lastly, what I was speaking to before is really protect mission. One of the things that happens typically as companies scale is they may have to take in outside capital that preferences financial returns over the company culture or mission that they were conceived with and or if they exit um, in terms of being bought by another or um, we're starting to see IPOs, um, that dilution of, of mission. Um, and so our, our premise is that companies can scale and maintain mission over time. Here's a couple stats in terms of um, what we see um, with why customers, again, in the CPG space are supporting brands that share their values. Um, there's been three times uh, the growth of B Corps to non-B Corps um, and that B Corps typically rank in the 90th percentile around performance. Um, B Corp certification in terms of GAP, the, the quote is coming here from GAP because GAP is really committed uh, most recently to join our Movement Builders program, which is a program we're initiating this January for multinationals to be part of the movement um, in a credible way. Uh, I can speak more to that if folks are curious about it later. Um, uh, Gap owns um, Athleta, which is one of our leading brands. 
We have a, this past year, um, over a year ago with uh, the midterm elections, we launched our first universal sort of brand campaign and it's called Vote Every Day. And it's a way of messaging to um, everyone that you're voting with your actions every day, not just at election time and that your dollar really is a ballot. And so what you wear, what you drink, where you work, how you invest, um, all of these are ways where you vote every day. More stats, um, a huge benefit for companies is attracting talent. Uh, millennials have kind of made this case for us um, extremely well. Um, I talked about four, four, whether it's the 88% that want their job to be more fulfilling or the 76% that consider um, the company's social environmental practices when they decide to join. Uh, the engagement stats that we found in terms of companies um, who are B Corps, the percentage of engagement they have over non-B Corp um, related um, surveys that we've been doing is nearly twice. So I talked about improvement. Uh, businesses like Eileen Fisher, Patagonia, Ben & Jerry's, you know, we specifically highlighted them because these are brands that you recognize and you have an expectation that they're doing well. The standards are difficult. Um, 80 is something to be celebrated. It's a really tricky bar. Um, and so to be able to have met that bar and to um, have improved over time in terms of, uh, in the certification term, sorry, it's three years. And so this is representing a three year um, period of time or potentially multiple um, terms, six year time uh, with Patagonia or longer, because uh, some of these companies have been certified for a longer period of time. Um, and I'm, you know what, I'm just realizing that the definition, where did it go? Uh, the, somehow I lost my slide on the definition of certified B Corp. Um, so let me back up and say what that is. Um, so in order to be a B Corp, you have to do two things. You have to um, certify based on the performance standards I mentioned, 80 out of a possible 200 points. Um, and that's a verified score. You start where you self-assess and then we verify that. And then secondly, you have to adopt a legal framework. Um, and that legal framework is the Benefit Corp um, legislation that we passed in the 37 states. And it alters your governing docs to um, state that you will consider all stakeholders in the operations of your business. Uh, current C Corp and S Corp law is about maximizing shareholder return. And so this is broadening your fiduciary responsibility. Um, and then thirdly, you sign our Declaration of Interdependence and, um, and pay the check. And I'll talk more about process later, but I apologize that I don't know how I lost that. Um, must have been a thing. Well, could you for a minute there, Stephanie, as, as you kind of now told us what a B Corp is and, and that customers are voting so with their dollars, so they care, and employees, especially at least around the millennials, they care. Um, do you see companies moving towards B Corp certification from a position of it's a marketing strategy, it's something they just want to promote externally, or do you see a real fundamental core shift in values? And I guess if at the end of the day their practices are improving, does it matter why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's a great question, Jean. Different people start in different starting points or different organizations. When I first started in um, you know, like a decade ago, 2008, uh, the companies who were coming on board were really coming on board as founding B Corps all for the values. They were all in. There was no business case. There was no brand. They lent us their mm -hmm. brand in order to do it. So those founding B Corps like 7th Gen and um, uh, Method and uh, King Arthur Flower were companies who said that we need to lead the way. Um, and over time, the business case, I think, has gotten stronger. And so we've attracted more companies recognizing that that third party certification is going to help them win the war on talent. You know, that's primarily the reason why Hootsuite came on board, uh, because they recognized they're an incredibly competitive tech market space and they wanted to differentiate themselves as a tech company that's also doing good as well as doing well. Um, so in the end, I guess it doesn't really matter, uh, as you were saying and implied, you know, the, um, what motivates you to do that. Um, a lot of companies have a more complicated equity table already. And so that decision um, is a trickier and harder one to alter the, the um, governing documents. And so that business case becomes ever more important. And so we've gotten better at making the business case, but I, I literally just finished a meeting with what I, we call um, kind of a rising star a company that's been scaling. Um, it's a, um, uh, 
ice cream business, essentially, that started with one shop and two shops and now has 19 and is being approached by, you know, leading um, actors. It's like it's a very hot brand and they're pursuing certification. And after we went through the whole business case, she essentially said, you know what, the reason why I want to do this is because I don't see a lot of B Corps who are in fast casual and I want to prove that you can scale in fast casual by doing the right thing. And so you know, after all of the, you know, the articulation of the business case and trying to get their equity table on board, the true founder is saying, I want to have success beyond the success of my business. I want to prove that I'm part of something larger. And I find that that is the most enduring reason and the business case will follow. Right. So. And it could be a publicly held company or a privately held company, correct? Technically, it could be, but the majority of the companies who are certified are um, uh, privately held companies. So we have um, mm -hmm. a couple exceptions to that. Um, Laureate, which is a um, for-profit um, uh, educational university with, I think, more than 150 different campuses, was a certified B Corp before they went public. So they took their B Corp certification with them during their IPO. We also have Natura, which is a Brazilian um, body care company. It's um, a billion plus um, business that recently acquired um, the body shop as well as um, Avon in their European operation. So they're probably one of our biggest B Corps. Mm -hmm. They are a publicly traded um, company in Brazil, but in Brazil, the laws were such that they already had written into their um, operating agreements, the considering of all stakeholders, because they're very mission driven around saving the Amazon and a lot of their, their products um, are used to help create um, both awareness as well as um, regenerative agriculture, a much more viable um, uh, uh, return to not decimating those trees, but, but using the products and fruits of them to keep them standing. Okay. And Stefana asks, can also can not-for-profits go for a certification? No. So this is really just for-profit yeah. companies. Yeah, not-for-profits take the B impact assessment, they can use that to measure and benchmark, but they won't get the designation because this is purely for business. Right, because it has a legal structure change and that is a, a for-profit structure. Right. And then Teresa asked the question, um, and this came up, I think Teresa asked when you were showing the scores, how Eileen Fisher moved from some 81 to 96. Is it public what your score is once you become a B Corp certified? certified company your yeah. score is actually public yes so two things about that we have a little sort of piece of real estate on the website once you certify your profile a little bit about who you are and a, your score and then aggregate number sort of underneath sort of how you've done summary of that mm -hmm. if you are however ben and jerry's because they are a subsidiary of a public company we have a higher verification and a transparency requirement so you can go in and click on a link on their profile and see Ben and Jerry's full B impact assessment with a couple of questions redacted um, so that you understand what it is that their business practices are, what it is that they're doing. Um, uh, so uh, for private okay, thank you. in aggregate data for wholly owned subsidiaries, um, uh, full, the full exposure. Great, anybody else have any questions? Okay, thanks Stephanie, back to you. So you're probably staring at this slide for a while. I don't know how many of you are wearing all birds. They tend to be pretty popular in the tech world. Um, yeah. So they're kind of one of our darlings of why being a big, why being a public benefit corps doesn't harm you at all in terms of raising capital or your visibility of your business only if it only makes it sort of more, more uh, attractive. Ah, here we go. At my slide, for whatever reason, that was thrown further down. Normally, I have it um, a little further up about what's required. So I mentioned this. You're going to meet the performance requirement. It'd be verified. You meet the legal requirement um, based on whether you're an LLC, you amend your operating agreements, and as a C Corp or an S Corp, you adopt benefit corp legislation, and then you sign the declaration of, of uh, interdependence and pay the fees. Usually right around now, people are confused with what's the difference between a B Corp and a benefit corp. Um, the certified B Corp, because the legal is required, you are an LLC, you could meet that legal requirement and not be a benefit corp. But for the most part, this is a set and subsets page. 
you can't be a certified B Corp without doing the legal. And most of those companies are C Corps and S Corps, so have adopted benefit corp legislation. You could be a benefit corp and not pursue certification. You register with the Secretary of State. It holds you accountable to a higher level of transparency and purpose. You declare a material positive gain. You register with that Secretary, Secretary of State. You track what is the benefits that you've been creating and you send a report annually to the Secretary of State and file against that. Questions, I'll pause here on B Corp or Benefit Corp. There'll be a quiz at the end. We'll get certified. <laughs> So, yeah. So, um, again, sets and subsets. There's only two, uh, 3,000 certified B Corps, but there's 8,000 as far as we know or more. It's hard to track them. Companies who've adopted benefit corporation status. Um, so you see overlap, but different names um, as well. So what is it that we're asking companies to tell us about when um, they're on the B Impact Assessment and how does that operate? So it's comprehensive in that we're looking at all stakeholders. Um, it's dynamic in that it's online and, and kind of changes and, and has tools and available to you. It's definitely um, ob objective and aspirational. It's giving you credit. It's a positive impact assessment for what you're doing. It's not dinging you for what you're not doing. Um, and it's looking, the questions have to be sort of verifiable. Um, uh, it's adaptive in terms of uh, when you first log on to the B Impact Assessment, it's going to ask you questions about your geography, the number of employees, and the um, industry really that you're in, and the questions are going to tier based on how you answer those gating questions. And then also built into it is what we call an impact business model, where you're able to get different points if you're really designed as a company that was intended, like say you are a solar business, um, in emerging markets and their whole point was to create employment as well as um, offer electricity um, to um, uh, folks in Africa. Like that has an, at the heart of it, it has an additional sort of impact business model. And Stephanie, I did a, a B impact assessment unverified just with a small team at my client. It took about six hours and many of the topics we, we couldn't even really complete. It, I just share that with the group. It is a very, very detailed assessment. Yeah, and I think your next slide is gonna kind of show where mm -hmm. the assessment covers. Yeah, mm -hmm. it deep dives on all of those. So we talk about uh, the colored um, um, headings across the top are the stakeholder groups. This is who you're considering um, in the way you operate your business. And then the sort of a different dive underneath in terms of big headings. You know, how you impact the community has to do with um, your job creation in the local community, who you're hiring, what quality of diversity represents your workforce, um, what's going on within your supply chain. The obvious, as you would imagine, with the environment has to do with um, water, waste, electricity, sort of inputs and outputs, and what sort of are you capable of, of reducing toxicity, of being carbon neutral, net zero. Um, we look a deeper dive into your workers. You know, what are your compensation packages, your opportunity for professional development? Do you offer paternity leave and maternity leave, kind of, for example? Do you do an employee survey regularly? Are there ways that which you share that? Um, uh, opportunity for folks to develop within the organization or kind of hire from outside your governance structure. Are you worker owned? Um, and then flipping over, like, do you have a code of ethics um, or whistleblowing policy in terms of your governance structure? Do you share financials? How transparent are you? Have you done the mission lock? Um, and then customers, are you impacting health, education, giving basic service to customers? So Stephanie, this covers every touch point almost of an organization. Their, their impact on the community that they're in, uh, just everything. Who do you see at companies initiating the B Corp certification? What mm -hmm. level are they at in the organization? What department are they at? Mm -hmm. I know there's new groups now around sustainability. They don't always seem to report in consistently. Sometimes it's HR, sometimes it's legal. Like, what, what are you seeing in terms of ownership of, of B Corp? 
Um, Gene, it's a great question. It's not, and um, there's a majority, I would say, that are more in sustainability and in sort of impact related roles, but marketing and sales can drive the process. And ironically, of late, we've seen a lot more gen um, general counsels driving the process. Um, which I've been shocked by. So that wasn't what we encountered. So the trend is shifting a little bit, I think, partly because of the um, recognition of the importance of benefit corp legislation, partly perhaps because of the business roundtables announcement and people really realizing, hey, we could adopt this legal framework and um, and kind of be beyond reproach at some level uh, it, at an, uh, it get credit for what we're, the way we're already running our business. Uh, but a majority of it is coming from somebody who holds a director of sustainability, someone who sits perhaps under um, a vice president of uh, strategic initiatives or operations or impact. Um, and, and it's not uncommon for it to be a champion internally, we call them a champion within the organization, who might even be a recent grad or a recent hire and sets the conversation in motion and then gets um, executive level buy-in, but they have to socialize it for a while. What we have seen, again, in the last probably three weeks, the influx since the business roundtable announcement, is a number of companies who'd been on the fence before who the C-suite is now 100% behind and are coming back around to us and saying, we're, we're all in, we're ready, let's get going. And uh, um, which is awesome. But it really requires obviously because of the change in the, in the um, uh, articles of incorporation C-suite buy-in. And ideally we try and bring that conversation, my background's in organizational consulting, I try to bring that C-suite level um, buy-in in as early as possible. Okay, and what were you talking about? A business round table change? Oh, I'm just uh, not familiar with that. Sure. So the Business Roundtable um, is a group of um, uh, public companies like IBM and uh, General Motors and Salesforce. Um, on August 19th, they announced that the purpose of business was no longer just sort of the Mol Milton Friedman um, maximized shareholder return, but that business needed to have a, a purpose greater than making money, which has been obviously the song that we have been singing for over a decade. And so that created a groundswell of press um, and opportunities for us to chime in. And um, within that Sunday of, I think that announcement happened, as I recall, on Monday, um, we had um, uh, our co-founder, Andrew, on Yahoo Finance. We had um, National Public Radio doing stories to the effect of this. There were like 21 different news sources had picked it up. And about 35 of our B Corps got to, um, in a very fast turnaround, decided to take an ad out in the New York Times Sunday paper um, on page 11 that said, um, let's get to work and had co-signed and essentially said, it's, it's great that you're saying you're willing to do this, but you've got to put your money behind, you know, your mouth and you've got to hold yourself accountable. So they really um, took a stand for the highest level of that transparency and verification have been B Corps and encouraging them to um, hold themselves accountable at that level. So it's been, it's been an exciting month, um, <laughs> to say the least. Well, that's great. Yeah. So I, anybody else out there have any questions? Otherwise it looks like you're ready to tell us how the certification process works. Well, just kind of a transition, but tell me, is there a question? I, I can't see the chat screen. So. No, nope, I don't see. I don't see any right now. So we're good. So tagging in what we were saying before, you know, the business case, knowing the business case and having the buy in from your, your senior leadership. So this is kind of like parallel play. Um, it's not sequential. You're familiar with this all as, as tech and engineers. What are all the things in this project management you have to be doing with simultaneity? So you're socializing and understanding um, what it would mean for getting buy-in. You're doing a baseline on the B-Impact assessment because it's free and available online. You can take that. Um, you can see where do you come in because your, your leadership is going to want to know what are the resources going to take to do this and are, how close or far are you from that 80-point bar. Um, and then um, doing the work in terms of um, the legal is really understanding what that roadmap is, depending on what your corporate form is and how you'd need to educate your shareholders and all to meet the requirements. Um, so it's engaging leadership, doing the B impact assessment and understanding your legal. And that comes together with um, documentation uh, and verification of that from us until you're certified. That's the easiest, that was the easiest slide to sort of see it at. This is 
the performance component and there's built-in links. You can see what we mean. Um, uh, submitting for review where we verify it, making sure that your legal is meeting the requirements and then paying the fees. Here's an example, just take the mystery out of it, sort of what the fee structure is for companies um, and what they get for that essentially. I'll pause there, you know, ranging from 500. Um, this uh, is an excerpted fee schedule. So we have multiple companies over a billion and there's a, a fee schedule for over a billion, but it wouldn't fit on the screen as easily. So, so it goes 50,000 and above at that point. These fees for a group, you know, used to seeing the prices of, of licensing fees and software and, and just tech in general, um, it does not seem like a very high fee. We try to keep it reasonable. Um, uh, and it, it's the big lab is a nonprofit of which our revenue streams come from the certification. Um, we'll talk a little bit perhaps later about B analytics, um, about some of our other program work, but we really, we fundraise more than 50% of our budget. Um, we probably bring in about 45% in earned revenue at this mm -hmm. point. Are you doing a lot? There is a question from Jillian about, um, Back to the business roundtable and, and that announcement. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, did the current administration support that roundtable proclamation? And I would probably add on to that question, is B-Lab actively lobbying for additional government support and regulation? So B-Lab is not lobbying um, uh, and, and probably never will. Um, our role is to stay as bipartisan as possible uh, because we want to, we try to be um, in our values. When we first started, we had a value that said we're for, not against, um, it, which quickly got challenged. We have an annual champions retreat um, where we bring together the um, B Corp community. It's literally next week in LA and there's 700 companies coming. Um, and I mean, 700 individuals company probably represents more like four or 500 companies. Um, and we were supposed to do that in North Carolina um, a couple of years back. I'm going to forget now the name of the bill, but it was essentially the bathroom bill around gender, um, uh, being able to have gender neutral bathrooms. Uh, and North Carolina had um, passed a law that said um, you couldn't essentially go to bath to the bathroom unless you were that origin of sex. And we realized that we couldn't hold the conference in North Carolina anymore and still create a safe space for all of our attendees. And so we pulled out. And so that was probably our first quote political move. And we also worked with, we, we created a, a transition phase. We said to um, the governor, we said, we are going to pull out if you, you know, if there isn't change on this bill. We lobbied in that sense with our own B Corp collective voice to try, you know, both B Corps there and B Corps outside um, as a way of, of trying to change the opportunity, like to actually be in conversation, but we weren't able to. And so as you can imagine, a small nonprofit pulling their annual gathering, hitting the cost of, of cancellation fees with hotels, the scramble for that. Um, but it was a statement of purpose for us. And so I think it really woke us up to, it's hard to always be for something and not necessarily against. Like we're for stakeholder consideration and really against shareholder capitalism. So there, it's always implied, but we've tended to put our energy on what we're for. Right now, um, it's a very politicized situation. You know, I do not think that the current administration had anything to do with the business roundtable announcement. I think that because of the current administration, businesses, and I, and I have stats on this um, from like Edelman, a lot of um, pressure is on CEOs now to be the ones helping to solve the most pressing social and clearly environmental problems because we have an administration who doesn't believe in climate change. That hasn't actually stopped many businesses who recognize the the viability of their business relies on having a sustainable planet. And so um, regardless of the Paris Accord, like many big companies are pushing strong and hard on sustainability, not because the administration is telling them to do so, because it's good practice, because um, good business practice for staying viable. So because I think of the current administration, more individuals mistrust government and are placing their faith in business and are expecting businesses to step up. Um, and I will share this in the link because I'll share my, my PDF of stats with Jean that she can share with you because it's like mind blowing. Um, the expectations now of the American public 
of business CEOs to take a stand for values that they believe in. And when we just recently saw um, Levi, um, who's not a B Corp, but Tom's who is, I think Salesforce, just this past week on gun control issues, taking a stand and demanding um, uh, different legislation on behalf of, of a safer community. And so businesses are stepping up in different roles. We have a subgroup of, um, of women B Corp CEOs who've been meeting for the last two years, initially hosted by Eileen Fisher in their offices in um, Terrytown. And they formed last this over the course of the year between the gatherings, their own um, declaration. And um, I'll also send that as a link because now you can sign on if you want as an ally. And it's really their declaration of, in, of um, intent and it's called We the Change. And it's about um, being radically inclusive and addressing again, um, gender issues, environmental issues. Um, we've also had working groups around um, climate change and uh, the B Corp community on their own initiative. So it's really important to hear this distinction. B Lab is not driving this, but the B Corp community is self-organizing and picking up issues that are important to them and speak as B Corps. But it isn't B Lab saying that we're taking that stand, if you can understand the distinction. And so for those of you who've been following Greta Thunberg's um, climate strike call, um, the young Swedish girl who started the um, walkouts on every Friday from classes and has mobilized you know, the, 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 the globe on this, has been calling for strikeouts, um, walkouts on Friday, uh, September 20th, a week from today. And so subsets in the UK, Canada, and the US of B Corps have put together a climate strike toolkit about how to support her work and not sort of brand it in any way as their businesses, but be as businesses supporting um, her, her strike. And, uh, and a number of our B Corps are striking, which is, I just find amazing. Questions? I know we're getting closer on time, about 15 minutes. Because this is the end of my sort of presentation. This is more kind of q and I have things hidden in the appendix, depending on your questions. <laughs> I, do have, I do have one question, and it might, might be of interest to the group, to dive a little deeper into just what type of analytics B Lab does during the certification process, sort of like, ah, there's a little peek behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. So um, B Analytics uh, is one of our tech platforms. In many ways, um, over the years, we thought of ourselves as a nonprofit, and then we realized we we're really a tech company because what would make us successful was the um, ease of use of our standards and invested. So Stephanie, just please repeat that. You're really a tech company. In many ways, I think we are because we live or die on the ability of our tech to be user friendly. Um, and if, if like you jump on the assessment, it's already hard enough because it's rigorous. The use, it, it, it needs to have a, um, a, a user um, a interface. What was that? UI? Is that right? Yes, UI, exactly. I'm learning all of the, the language from being here. You know, this like rolls off your tongue. I did a couple, like I have to second guess myself. Uh, but it, how do you make that experience one that is rich, um, intuitive, uh, and then they can find the resources they need as they click through? Um, because part of what our early work was working with investment um, companies, VC firms who had portfolios of companies and they were getting a rating as they could be both a certified B Corp, but they could also be a gears rated um, fund. They needed to put all of the companies within their funds through the assessment. And so instead of tracking them singly, we developed something called B Analytics so that those fund managers could work with that portfolio of companies and use their own ESG um, measures to see what the impact was of their funds. And so it has this you know, ease of data, benchmarking, um, uh, uh, reports they can pull, things they can customize. And here's kind of a look. Um, we've also had multiple rounds of tech and changing our platforms. Um, uh, so really honestly beyond my comprehension, uh, but it, it gets prettier and prettier as time goes on. Um, and so I don't know how well you can see, but you kind of get a feel for what folks can look at in terms of their uh, comparisons 
um, and calling information out in terms of profiles and customizing that. Um, so they would be looking at uh, specific questions over periods of time to see how, um, like, um, uh, what percentage of their companies are paying above the minimum wage or um, percentages of businesses from micro distributors or percentages of companies owned by non executive employees like where can how can you track what's going on inside and across the field. And now because we're certifying companies who are much more complex, um, you know, literally over a billion in revenues and bringing multiple subsidiaries like Danone North America through the certification and they've earned certification, they had to use B analytics because they were they had in order to be um, uh, certified at that highest level, all of their companies um, had to aggregately pass that 80 point bar. And so anytime now we have a company that needs to take um, three or more um, B impact assessments to comprehensively measure the whole organization, we put them on analytics so that they can do it with more ease, as well as um, track and we can all interact more credibly on the, on the, the data. Is that helpful? Take a deeper dive. Yeah, very much so. It's interesting. It's a nice dashboard. Hmm. Sort of uh, a tableau is sort of underneath it, so you can click and see is it? cloud. Yeah, it, yes, that was one of the migrations <laughs> to make it, you know, be able to to um, see where the trends and all existed, or how people were answering, and then you can click on. Um, other questions. Look at that, we got through the deck in almost 10 minutes to spare. It's gotta be some burning question. <laughs> well, it's a lot to take in. I've been in this space for a little while, having done an, an assessment, a unverified free assessment, um, and and having had a couple of conversations. And I do find it's, it's something that uh, just the process itself and take some time to figure out. Um, I think I, I might have an ask for everybody to read through the deck and continue to think about it and then kind of go back to your companies and, and think about where, who is the right person to talk to about this and, and get those conversations going. Um, and there is just now a question from Teresa, if there's a list of metrics for a startup S Corp to switch to a B Corp. So kind of really bare bones, how, to, how would somebody get started, Stephanie? And is that going to the B Lab homepage and taking the assessment unverified? Yeah, so there's two questions in there. So if you're wanting, if you're wanting to pursue certification, you know, www.bcorporation.net, um, and mm -hmm. you can just click on, again, certification, which is down here in the lower corner. I don't know how well my screen is visible here. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to walk you through as you scroll, like why companies certify, what the requirements are about. Click mm -hmm. here and you'll get the B impact assessment. Click here and it'll, it'll speak to the legal requirements required for you um, and what's involved. Um, as you scroll down, you'll see the fees. Um, the, yeah, if, so let's pause at the fees for a moment. Mm -hmm. So if it's a startup company, let's say it's less than less than two million sounds pretty reasonable we're talking about a max fee of sixteen hundred dollars yeah yeah and and that's an annual it's an annual certification right so it's somebody taking the assessment themselves and then bringing in your team to do a verified assessment right first step self-assess Second step, submit, and then you get verification with a phone call with our standards analysts, back and forth with some documentation, and we see if your score okay. is over 80. If it remains over 80, then you're eligible to certify, providing you do the And if you're, if you're eligible, but let's say you're an S Corp or a LLC, mm -hmm. what time frame do you have to become a B Corp? That's a question from Teresa. Great. So as an LLC, you have 90 days to change your operating agreement from the time you sign. Most LLCs do it prior to going through verification because that's worth about okay. 10 points. That helps you get over the bar. Um, if you're a um, C Corp and an S Corp, um, providing that the um, state that you're in where you've incorporated um, has passed benefit corp legislation, then you register with the secretary of state. 
Um, and so this website, which is dedicated to the legal piece of it, has a whole piece on the steps of what you do to become a benefit corp. And it's going to, you know, it's going to go state by state and how it varies because some of, even if we pass the legislation, the laws, sometimes we put draft legislation forward, but sometimes the state has modified it slightly differently. And you can see all the okay. states where we have um, passed legislation. And I asked the question earlier about who typically initiates this process. And, and your answer kind of was, bro was broad because now Stefana has asked in the chat, What's the starting point and who do I approach? So if, if we're in tech and we want to actually have this conversation, it's gonna vary based on the company about who you even start having the conversation with, right? Yeah, I mean, really, like you could talk with your, um, depending on how large the company is, you know, go straight to the CEO, you know, if you have access in that regard is what I would recommend. Say, hey, I learned about this. And I think this is a real differentiator for us in the marketplace. I think um, even if we don't certify initially, like what I hear, you could say what you've heard, but what I hear all the time is companies value just taking the assessment because it's a great opportunity for conversation around, hey, we do this, but we haven't documented it. Like, and we're starting to scale, it's important for us to start to codify our practices. Or we don't do this, but we could, why don't we? Um, and so it's a great conversation point. And what I always say is um, try and take the assessment on your first pass as fast as possible. Use your big picture mind and do your best conservative guess. Don't get in the weeds about the questions in terms of um, what are they really asking for here and go down the rabbit hole. Just do your, there's usually the questions are in buckets. And you can just click the bucket that you think most applies. And then afterwards, you can, you can tick a question that's there in our, in our, um, and pull a revisit this sort of approach. So if you want to go back to those questions later, you can pull the whole report where the ones you're like, I got to go double check that answer. But then that's going to give you a sense of the big picture and the baseline. And it's going to take the mystery out of the process um, and some of the questions that you have um, about, like, how do I do this? And I think another thing that will help Stefana is that I'll be sharing this PDF so you can kind of have that conversation and even share um, the slide that really shows that this impacts community and employees and, and just the, the breadth that the certification process covers. Yeah. You know, it, it will help whoever you're talking with to say like, hey, do we want to be excellent at all of these? And, you know, hopefully, hopefully they do. Hopefully the answer is yes. And I feel like our company, you know, we, we, we kind of head in those directions based on what your assessment looks like. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that we realize that there's an op opportunity here um, for, for the company, but uh, definitely excited to, to bring this to, to our head of HR and, and our CTO. Yeah. And one of the things that's also really cool, it's built in once you log into the assessment, um, but we, are, we also have a knowledge base um, uh, platform that supports the assessment. I guess this would be part of our tech side as well. And so you could just Google, you know, knowledge base B Lab. And so a lot of your questions about like, how, how do we do this? What's involved in the, like, if you're caught in this, in the um, B Impact Assessment and you have of like the revisit this report or um, understanding the score. But the thing that I wanted to bring your attention to is, best practices. So really remember, B-Lab is a nonprofit and our goal is to bring as many companies on board towards better practices, regardless of whether they pursue certification. And so you gain free access. Think about this as a free consultant, helping you comprehensively measure your business. And then here are some of the things that you could benefit from as best practices that are free and downloadable for you. So there's over 20 or 30 guides here around implementing environmental management systems or how to engage and retain a diverse workforce or better financial practices reporting, um, uh, having a, a family-friendly workplace toolkit, um, governance practices, you know, what's the basics of a mission-aligned government structure? So all of these are ways to improve the, um, the performance of your business and operations of your business, regardless of whether you sort of choose to certify. Um, but but it, like the call to action, I would say is, get on the assessment, take a try. It's like getting a, it's like going to your general practitioner and getting a diagnosis of your organization. 
and seeing like all the vital signs where you're strong and where you might be weak, where there's an opportunity to grow or get on the knowledge base and cruise around based on what you already know are areas you want to improve within your business. Could you um, yeah. possibly, you had provided a link prior, you were that, that red one, what, it, how to become a benefit corp. Could you just give us the URL to that? Yeah. So it's benefitcorp.net. Oh, benefitcorp.net. I was, <laughs> I was trying to get to it. It's no, it's okay. It's, it's, um, and I'll, when, when Jean sends out the information, I'll do this like a little cover page with these three different sites that you can go to straight up. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's been uh, really, really helpful. It's something I, I'm feeling confident about bringing it to our, our leadership. We are having our, our first all hands in about two years in a few weeks. So I hope that they maybe will talk about it in person. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah. I think, I think there is a call to action to, to talk with our organizations that we're associated with and even just simply to be a more aware consumer. The, the slide that shows that every dollar we spend is actually casting a ballot, that really resonates with me. Mm -hmm. So when you, um, this might load slowly, but if you're curious, so like you can, what I was saying, this is exactly what I did is, oh. I did tech, but then I decided just to go industry. So you can search by industry, um, IT software design, like might be one of the industries sort of to look at. You can select by region, but then you'll get a sense. I'm just trying to pull up. It's slow. It's trying. There we go. Um, these are IT firms. Um, so this is in Texas. You'll get a, see, a, a, a sense for what you see on their little piece of real estate and what you can click on to their website. You know, they just recently certified in August, literally this month, um, in terms of the work. So like you can snoop around who's in the community. Who do you want to buy from? You want to buy a bear jeans. You want to like, you want to support the B Corp movement. You're looking at who's beer company, whatever it is, your wine companies. Um, you can find companies that you can support with your vote every day dollar as well. Okay. We're on time. We're out of time. Stephanie, thank you so much for your time today and all the work that you're doing with B Lab. This was really very interesting. Great. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day all. Bye-bye now. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Bye guys. Thank you.